Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> so, so kind of tell me how the defensive line has been progressing ever since you guys lost Jermaine and then to have to kind of replace him and, and see where things have kind of grown from there. How, how have you guys kind of adapted to that? Well, I can definitely say, um, you know, speaking from everybody, uh, our thoughts and prayers are with Jermaine and his family. You know, um, you never want to see that happen to anybody. You know, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Um, the one thing I'll say is what's great about Coach Rod is that he coaches everybody. He doesn't just coach the starters. He doesn't just coach you if you play good. Uh, he coaches everybody. So it allows for the developmental guys who have been coming up, people like Omar, uh, Ku, BJ, um, TJ, Shannon. He allows those guys to be able to, you know, step up and make a play too. Uh, so that's the great thing about Coach Rod. You know, he coaches everybody. So. How have you seen Omar perform since he had to step up in a pretty big role? Yeah, he's been doing really good. I mean, the kid is, he he is, he's always going. He's, that kid, you, you'll never, you can never tell him to slow down. <laughs> he's always going. Um, he's been doing ph uh, phenomenal. Um, one of the things that he always does is he always comes up to me because he wants to learn more about the game. Um, he wants to be smarter. He wants to learn the formations. He wants to anticipate what's coming. Um, so I'm really proud of him for that. He's really, you know, starting to mature a lot more um, in his gameplay, um, in his film watching, in his note taking, and stuff like that. I think it's really vital for young guys and even older guys too. If you're not taking notes and you're not studying your opponent, uh, you know, you're just a sitting duck. What do you think this unit is capable of as a whole this year? Non-biased. Uh, we can be the best D line in the country, but. Uh, I think we, I, I think that's definitely attainable. Uh, I think we can be the d best D line if we all put our heads together and do what we got to do. Uh, I really think we can be, a, you know, top top five in the country. And to attain that, have you guys set numerical goals like sacks that you want to achieve, or is it kind of just you want to be the best and it's kind of a, a thing like that? Well, I think the great thing about our scheme and the way we play. If we play our technique, we read our keys, and we do the right thing, the sacks, the tackles for loss, those plays will come. You know, if you're only focused on getting all those sacks, you're losing everything else, you know? So we're trying to focus on, you know, the entire picture, reading your keys, allowing your body position to put you in the right place to make that play, um, instead of just, hey, we're gonna try to get 50 sacks this year. Um, I really think that's important because if you put yourself in the right position, you'll make the play. Last time we talked to you, you talked about bridging the gap between the ones and the twos and becoming more whole as a yeah. unit. How has that changed across the past two weeks? Oh, the young guys, everybody has been honestly been balling. Um, guys like Joe, Stanley, they're getting a lot more responsibility, and it's really that's really good um, because you know, we're we're in the third quarter and we need to put more people in because you know maybe the starters or someone else is tired. He has no hesitation in putting them in. You know, um, I think that's really important, and I think we're doing a really good job of that. And then you also talked about um, making Rod's philosophies and techniques your own. Mm -hmm. Do you think you you guys have done a better job of that? Yeah, no, I think um, coming out of camp the last couple, the last week out of camp, um, I think that was really our goal. We want to refine that, bring, you know, get that momentum going into the season. Um, you know, we, we come to work, we try to get one percent every one uh, percent better every day, just like Herm says. Um, and there's always ways to improve, but I definitely think we're starting to take it, make it our own, and honestly have fun with it. Uh, I think that's one of the most important things. You know, everything that everything kind of gets lost in the shuffle, but everybody kind of forgets to just have fun. You know, we're football players. We want to have fun. We do this because we love it. Um, so that's really one of the most important things as well. Because you can make it your own. You just go out there and ball and have fun. How has Trez impacted this unit? And just kind of what's impressed you about him and the way that he, you know, takes on practice or the, his ability on the field? Kid's fast. <laughs> He's really fast. <laughs> He's really fast. Um, he definitely brings a new element to the D line, um, which is really good. And that's not to say that we don't have a lot of speed rushers. Um, but, you know, he kind of brings in a new perspective. Um, he's really good on the right side. And I think, you know, it, I, I would say it inspires some competition. I know for a fact, you know, I, I actually just made a bet with him today. There, during the last two-minute period of the, uh, the, the um, practice, I made a bet. <laughs> I bet him $20 that I got more sacks with him on the last period. But we'll, see, <laughs> we'll see if that works. But <laughs> if not, I'm going to lose money. But, uh, no, it definitely inspires competition. It's, that's really great. It's really great for the room. Tremez said last week that, Coach Rod was the best defensive line coach he had had in his career, and that even dated back to his time with LSU and the national championship team. What separates Coach Rod and makes him such a great defensive line coach? He actually cares about you. Um, and I wasn't with Nua or Slater um, for a longer period of time, for a long period of time. I can say I've had five D-line coaches now, um, and every one of them has been different in their own way, but I can by far say that Coach Rod is one of the best. Um, 
I think he's the most impactful on us. He makes the, he breaks the game down a lot easier. Um, makes us able to it, it allows us to you know develop right and he cares about those young guys right he doesn't just throw the young guys out out of the room and say hey y'all are on scout team you know we're, we're doing only the starters in here right he cares about everybody you know he's that if he's telling you know DJ Davidson something he's making sure that TJ uh, BJ and Garen hear the same exact message right um, I think that's one of the I think that's one of the <laughs> sorry I think that's one of the best you know things a coach can do really um, because, like I said, it bridges that gap. Once you get to that point where you have to put those guys in and you haven't been coaching them for the past 12 weeks and they expect someone gets hurt, God forbid, and you're in the middle of a Rose Bowl, you have to put the freshman in and you didn't coach them the whole time, you know, you're kind of screwed. Yeah. Um, so I definitely think Coach Rod has made a really good impact on us, and he's a great guy. And we've seen it that the focus that he's putting on those younger guys has really developed B.J. Green. What have you seen from, from B.J. so far and, and what his role can potentially be? Kid has a freaking motor. Like, he can run. He can run. Um, everybody says he's undersized. Honestly, you can throw that out the window. The kid's a ball player. Um, I, I mean, I've, I'm a six, one and a half defensive end. You know, nobody ever sees that anymore. So if I can beat the odds, so can he. Um, but kid has a motor, and that's what's going to keep him going. You know, it's just like in the, you know, coach says this like all the time in the NFL. It's the guys who have a motor who can run to the ball. They make the second, the third contract. It's not you know the guys who just can make that one play. Um, so he's a ball player, and Garen is too. Garen is, is too. So you talked about Rodriguez impacting yeah. guys the most since you've been here. How has he specifically impacted you and made you a better player? It makes me focus on the details. Uh, you know, coming from my high school, we were definitely detail oriented, but not to this extent. Um, and he's honestly made me a, a smarter football player. Um, I focus on formations, right? I focus on my keys. You know, kind of have a narrower vision on my keys. Um, but it just allows me to play better. Um, he basically molds us to fit the scheme, but allows us to be our own player. Because I'm not going to play the same way Trevez is. I'm not going to play the same way that Coop is going to play. Um, so I, you know, he just he, he breaks the game down and creates or makes us focus on that technique so much that it just becomes second nature. Um, what, what does Coach Joe Connolly bring to this team? Dude, Coach Joe, he's a uh, oh, – oh, I thought he was in here. By the way, he just had a baby, so congrats to him. Uh, beautiful daughter. Um, Coach Joe brings the juice every day. That dude is juiced up. I, every time <laughs> – there was one day I, I walked out and I see him, he's wearing a sleeveless shirt and pit vipers, and I was like, yeah, you know, that's my strength, Coach. <laughs> but, you know, he brings the juice. And I came in my freshman year at 230 pounds, and I'm 270 now. So that's to say he's done a really good job. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. And what, what do you think the key was to, from building you up from 230 to 260? Uh, eating a lot, like to the point where it makes you sick. Uh, it's funny because I'm roommates with Kyle Soli, and he told me a long time ago, he's like, yeah, you don't eat for pleasure anymore. Like, it's just, a, it's a job now. And so, is yeah. that Coach Joe? Oh, yeah. Joe's plan and everything? Oh, yeah. 100%. You got to eat. Yeah, and you, when, if you're sick of eating, you still got to eat. But especially in camp, right, because guys lose a lot of weight. Um, Coach Joe's definitely on us about it, on us all the time, getting us bigger, stronger, faster, being able to last four quarters in 12, 12 games. How cool is it seeing him become a father? Has he become like a total softy now? <laughs> yeah, I hope, <laughs> hopefully on Friday he can take it a little easier. But uh, no, he's, he, he's the same through and through, but he deserves it. He, um, I know he had said they had um, – He's been waiting on this blessing for a while, oh, quite a while, so I'm super happy for him. She's a beautiful girl, and uh, no, I, I hope the best for them and their family. So, when you talk about the fun involved just playing football, how much does that just involve the game, like going with fans, the lights, all of that coming back this year? Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be a different, right? I mean, we came from playing four games with not a single soul in the uh, in the stadium, and we're used to you know the lights and the noise and stuff. So it's definitely gonna create a sense of suspense for us, right? Because we're ready to get out there, we're ready to see all these people, um, and obviously, hopefully for the, you know for the younger guys, they're not gonna be too nervous. Um, but uh, no, I think honestly everybody's just amped up and ready. Like I'm ready to go and play in front of a bunch of people. I want to hear people scream and I want to hear people shout and I want to see a bunch of people um, in the stands. So I'm excited. I'm really excited. And at practice, is it already game mode, game environment? Uh, yes and no. We, I, I can definitely say they still want us to have fun. We still want to be able to do what we got to do and have a good time. Um, but it's definitely 
starting to get there. We, we're starting to focus on the details. We're starting to, you know, break down their off, or, you know, break down our opponent's offense and, um, you know, get us in the right positions. Be ready for that game. Be prepared, right? I know uh, there was AP said the other day, you know, we were running after practice. We got to get in game shape, you know, because there's a difference, right? I think uh, a lot of people can attest that you can run as many half gassers as you want, but getting on a field and playing 11 snaps in a row is awful. There's no comparison. Um, so we definitely got to get, you know, in better shape especially me and myself, but uh, no, we could definitely, especially the way the meetings are ran, you know, um, AP's really taking the reins um, and I'm all for it, you know, getting everybody ready. We got to lock in. We got a long season ahead of us and we got to make it, you know, get, you know, get started right. So.